Hi, I'm Simon K. Jones, and you're listening to the audio version of my book, Tales from the Triverse. Unintended Consequences, Part 3. Previously, Detective Miller has been gathering material to use against his colleague, Detective Backer, and create a scandal. He's tasked DC Frank Holland with delivering the bad news. Backer has been expecting this for some time. London, 1974, December. The two men moved through the house silently, Backer leading them through to the kitchen. A heavy anticipation hung in the air. Backer had known that Holland was in with Miller, had been having meetings with him for months, and was most likely part of whatever was going on at the Joint Council. There he was, in Backer's house, and Holland was capable of just about anything, as his record showed. Lauren must have been upstairs with the children. Hopefully she'd stay there rather than venture down to greet him home from work. Or perhaps Holland would be relying on her presence. After all, Backer knew what was about to happen. There would be a recording of him and Shaw, and, while he'd put an end to it before anything had happened, it would not look good. The recording could be edited judiciously to make it look worse than it was. Though it was bad enough, no matter how it was presented. Shaw, a stride backer, his hands on her breasts. It had been a moment of weakness, of being distracted. He'd caught himself in time for his own conscience, but not soon enough to avoid being compromised. And now Holland was here to deliver an ultimatum, to blackmail him into backing off. Perhaps it was better this way. A humiliation was preferable to a beheading, and Callahan's fate was fresh in Backer's mind as he closed the heavy wooden door. "'Can I get you a drink?' he asked. The urge to be polite was hard to shake. It introduced a small fragment of normalcy to what was otherwise distinctly abnormal. "'Yeah,' Holland said. "'Just whip me up a cocktail. Christ, Backer.' He orbited the room as if looking for something, then pointed to the radio cassette player. "'Does that work?' Backer pulled a stool out from beneath the counter and perched on its edge, arms crossed. "'It does.' Why are you here, Frank? Got something to show you. Holland was twitchy, apparently nervous, which was unusual for a man so often convinced of his own self. He examined the radio for a moment, then turned to face Backer. You do know they've got you, right? On tape. Shifting his posture, Backer nodded. I am aware of this, yes. I don't know who exactly they are, of course. Interesting that Holland was cutting straight to the chase. Also, there was something about his turn of phrase. Holland reached into his jacket and pulled out a cassette case. Flipping it open, he slid out the cassette and turned it over in his hand. He pressed a metal lever to open the radio's deck and loaded it, then clicked down on the play button and leaned against the cabinet, looking down at the floor. In the quiet, there was only the background hum of the boiler and the gentle, almost imperceptible whirring of the tape in the machine. Here's the thing, Holland said, lifting his eyes to meet Backer's. You've got them too. A voice came from the radio. Anyone home, Miller? It was Holland's voice. There was silence for a moment, then another, different voice. Lost to think about, Frank. It was Miller. I trust all that made sense. With the new government, there are going to be changes, like we've been talking about. Holland pressed his finger lightly on the fast-forward button, and the tape squealed for a couple of seconds. We need to know who we can trust. Who's a proper patriot? We all know there's been an incursion into the civil service, the government, in the Met. We're doing something about all of that. We've got the right people in power at last, but we need the right people on the ground, too. We need to know about Clark Kaminsky. Chakraborty. Another squeal. Holland continuing to stare back a right between the eyes as he held the button, not blinking or averting his gaze. As he listened, Backer's entire understanding of his evening crumbled to pieces. The recording of Miller's voice continued. I'm gathering evidence, and I think we'll be able to make a move on Backer sooner rather than later. But he's clever. We need a backup plan. That's where you come in. Squeal. That's why we need to use our own initiative and the skills we have available to us. We need you 
to seduce him, Catelyn. The recording shifted to a woman's voice, Catelyn Shaw. What? He stopped and ejected the tape, placed it on the counter. The two men stared at each other for a long time, long enough for the boiler to shut off, having successfully heated the house. Backer felt a rush of blood, and was glad to be half sat on the stool. Holland, usually so full of bluster, and really shy to offer an opinion, stood silently. The man was waiting for Backer's response, he realised. What exactly is this, Frank? Wiping a hand along the edge of his jaw, Holland grinned ruefully. This is me saving your ass, Backer. He grimaced. You're fucking my own. We'll see, I suppose. How did you get this? Holland smiled. I've been wearing a wire into meetings for a while. Borrowed it from the locker room. Benefit of bigger budgets and more gear is that nobody notices when something goes missing. The big question then. Why? Something wasn't right. I thought it was you at first. That's what Miller was counting on, but he forgot something. Backer took a deep breath, waiting for the punchline. And what was that? That I'm a fucking good detective. He reached into his jacket again and took out another tape. I have a whole stack of these. He loaded it into the radio and hit play. From the tinny speaker came Miller's voice again. Maxwell? Fuck Nigel Maxwell. Come on, he's a useful fool. He's a pawn, right? Or rather, he's a mouth. Earth first, but the muscle? They're not the brains. The tape squealed. Me, others, Lord Hutchinson, you already know. I think you're a real asset, Holland. We want you to be a big part of this. Holland stopped the tape. You get the idea. There was firm evidence of a blackmail attempt, and of the involvement of others. Backer ran the chances of arrest and conviction through his head. Is it enough? A wide grin spread across Holland's face. He looked happier than Backer could remember ever seeing him. In fact, it might have been the first time. All these tapes together is enough, believe me. Enough to bring Miller down, at least, and to get the ball rolling. To point some juicy fingers at the people he's working with. He nodded at Backer. I'm hoping you've got something that can give it a boost. The man wanted information. That was fair enough, but it could still be a trap, just as easily as it could be a genuine attempt to help. Backer would have to be careful. What about the video of me? Yeah, yeah, they've got that, Holland said. You showed some serious restraint there. Can't say I'd have done the same, but look, it's enough to cause you some hassle. But you know what? A little bit of office sexy time isn't nearly as bad as conspiracy to control and manipulate the government and joint council. You've got the edge. Holland placed several more cassettes onto the kitchen counter. This is everything I've got, he continued. I have copies as well. I'm giving you all of this as a gesture of my intentions. I'm implicated in all of this, so it's going to be difficult for me. He shrugged. I know you think I'm an arsehole backer. That's fine. But I'm not a wanker. Backer crossed the kitchen and took two shot glasses from a cupboard. And what do you want? I want in, Holland said. Whatever you've got going on, and I want to be there when you nail this son of a bitch to the wall. Lifting a bottle of port from a shelf, Backer poured them a glass each. How about that drink now? Never say no to that, Holland said. Backer took a gentle sip. I appreciate what you've done here, Frank. I need to tread carefully. There are a lot of factions and a lot of livelihoods riding on this. It's not a decision I can make on my own. Fair, Holland said. Slowly does it. I get that. So what can you tell me? How deep does this go? The new evidence shifted the conversation entirely. They had leverage, damn it. For the first time, they weren't on the back foot. All right, he said at last. Let me tell you about what really happened with John Callahan. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed that chapter. That was a big one. Uh, I'll see you over on the newsletter at simonkjones.substack.com where you can get behind the scenes author notes and leave comments. Thanks so much for listening.